think she can see in this episode. <laughs> uh, season two of Prime Video's Lord of the Rings, Rings of Power, is racing toward its climatic end. With only, only two episodes yeah. left. That's it. Yep. Fans can't wait to see what comes of Middle Earth. Cynthia Di Robinson leads the way. She plays Queen Regent Muriel, and she joins us right now with insight on what it takes to play such a high-pressure role. Thank you for joining us, Queen. <laughs> oh, hell, the Queen. I love being introduced that way. Thank yeah. you for having me. Well, you know, like, we talk about this. I mean, this thing has really taken off. Your two episodes left in season two. The first 11 days, it put out more than 40 million people watched it. Yeah. It's a hit globally. Like, that's got to be, I don't know if it's cool or scary for you as an actress, <laughs> that wherever you go, people recognize you because they recognize this show. Well, I like to say I hide in plain sight. So in my day to day, I actually feel like, you know, I managed to sort of just, you know, sneak around. But it, it is cool. It is great. I mean, to work on something that has this amount of reach, that's watched in several countries, in different languages even, um, I'm very proud of that. And you certainly hope as an actor that you get to do something and people actually watch it. That is the, the goal at the end of the day. So very happy to say that we've been number one on Prime and, and uh, I'm excited for people to see this finale. It's definitely been a really great season. You, you've had a long career, but I always wonder, like, when you get to this point where you get something that just kind of blows up, like, people think, oh, overnight hit. You're not an overnight hit. <laughs> but, like, when you get something, when you got the call for this and knew that you would be in this role, what was the feeling? Like, did it feel different, special? You knew that this had a chance to be this big? Well, you're always hopeful, but when I think back to my journey with this, you know, because really my very first audition for this was in 2019. Um, and so it's really been like a few years for me, the, the whole journey being part of this show. But it was, uh, I was cast during lockdown. Ooh. I went to New Zealand to work on the first season in the middle of lockdown. So it was, it was a strange time. Um, and of course I was excited, but you know, the world was upside down. So I was sort of having both of those experiences at the same time. So I'm always grateful to be part of anything, but this has an extra special meaning for Let's me. Let's talk about this scene right here that's going on, because <laughs> I want to see that underwater scene, play it, because everybody is talking about the last episode, and your character is tested. She is. And she comes out, are we allowed to say it? <laughs> sure, yeah. Victoria. It's, it's aired already, yes. Okay, but you never know, you never know, mm -hmm. yeah. But what was it like shooting that scene for you? Because you were underwater. Uh, what were the challenges? I mean, to work underwater, first of all, I'm not a water baby. I'm not somebody who's ever done scuba diving or anything like that. Um, and oftentimes you get the privilege as an actor of doing things that you would never do just, you know, for the sake of it. Um, and it was intense. I mean, working underwater, breathing underwater, uh, all in service to this part of the story where, how as you long, say. Yeah. How long do you have to stay underwater? Like, did you have to hold your breath? How, how does that work, There Cynthia? are the whole mechanics. You, uh, there's an incredible water safety team that works out of Pinewood in London. And you have uh, this amazing support system. So you literally have someone swimming next to you. They're holding your respirator. You know, there's a series of steps. You have to sort of train to, to, to do it. And my sequence, you know, at the end of the day, it's, it took us a few days to get the underwater part. But um, this sequence where we're sort of on this sort of craggy cliff, yeah. uh, we filmed in Tenerife. So mm. what I filmed in the tank was a separate piece than sort of this, ah. uh, the dramatic beats that we filmed in Tenerife. So when you see it all together, it's very much movie about. This show is taking you all over the world. So it it's is. Not that bad. New Zealand, <laughs> England, Spain, all over. I don't over. have, so, I don't yeah. have a finale can compare to this. I mean, that was a pretty dramatic The uh, finale episode. is going to be amazing. And I purposely, I have not seen the finale myself. I am purposely saving it and waiting because it's going to be huge, epic, um, a big, big battle. I think that's not a spoiler to say. Um, one of the biggest. And uh, it's going to be amazing. Like I said, it's been an incredible season, and I'm just proud to just be, you know, a part of Middle Earth. Well, we thank you for coming, for coming from Middle Earth to join us here in New York, back in your old stomping grounds. You went to NYU, right? Yes, NYU alum, and, and every time I come to New York, I always just feel nostalgic and... What is it you have to do when you come back? Like, oh, I gotta go to this place or see gotta this person. Eat. Yeah, yeah. Gotta eat. Yeah, of course. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was gonna say, see, see my friends. Yeah. Eat with my friends. Yeah. 
Um, and just, I love just walking around the city. I love just, especially when you feel the changing of the season. Of course, it's starting to get very autumnal. Um, and I just have so many fond memories. And yeah, I just love taking a stroll, put my headphones in and just let the city unfold before me. Well, congratulations. We're happy that you're back here and we're happy for uh, your show. Do you think, do you know yet if uh, you got the season three? Next, next we, season? Hopefully we'll hear something soon. We shall see. Okay. And the we'll, story certainly continues. You know, there's so much story to tell in Middle Earth. So, you know, let's, let's see. You're the queen. Can't you just make yeah. people do yeah. it? <laughs> Come on. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much, Cynthia Dye Thank Robinson. Thank you. Thank you. After an extended, sold-out run at Playwrights Horizons, the musical Teeth has found a new home at New World Stages, and it's based on a cult classic film, Teeth. It's a hilarious, dark comedy filled with desire, angst, rage, and a whole lot more. All right, brought to you by Michael R. Jackson, the Pulitzer Prize winner uh, artist behind A Strange Loop. Uh, Olivier Award winner as well. Andy Carl is sinking his teeth into the role of Pastor Bill O'Keefe. Nice to have you back on Good Day New York, Thank Andy you. Carl. It's really good to be here. So, uh, you haven't even started yet, right? I start rehearsals today. Oh, uh, the yeah, first so uh, day. you just saw a clip of uh, a presentation we did yesterday uh, inside of a church, which was very fitting for, uh, for our show. Give us an idea of what it's about because, I mean, you know, Kurt alludes that it's a little. Yeah, yeah. A little yeah. Risky subject matter. I'm going to let everybody Google that uh, okay. <laughs> before going into too much detail. But it's based on the 2007 uh, indie film, the horror film uh, that, that was just it became a cult classic. And now the musical is becoming a cult classic. Apparently, there were lines out of Playwrights Horizons. People were clamoring to see the show. It it had a short run. Now it's moving to New World stages where we are going to put it up again. I'm coming in new to it. So. All right. So the the family friendly version of this is a woman's body part. <laughs> Not the teeth? Well, no, well yeah. It, it takes revenge on people who don't do right by her. Is exactly. that a way to say it? That's that's a perfect way to say it. I'll let you handle that. Okay. Uh, yeah, the, <laughs> some of the themes based around the show are like uh, religion and, and misogyny mm -hmm. and uh, female empowerment. Uh, but it's all done in a, in a hilarious, like exciting new way. There's nothing like this show. I read the script and I was like, how are we going to do this? And uh, I can't wait to get started. Um, it's going to be something that's, uh, there's some actually some of the cast members coming from Playwrights Horizons who are going to be in this production. Uh, Elise Luis and uh, Will Connolly, uh, Jason Gote, I want to say his name right. correctly. These these performers are fantastic, so, so I'm it, joining them. Is uh, this a limited run, or this uh, is... This is an open-ended run, so oh, get your good. tickets. So, uh, yeah, we're starting October 18th with previews, and then we open on Halloween. Oh, fabulous. Now, do you sing, dance? What do you do? We do it all. I'm, I'm bringing... I play several different characters in this show. Uh, lots of wigs and, and glasses. <laughs> oh, and, uh, yeah, but one of my, my main characters is a pastor who's sort of a religious zealot, keeping the young women of this town uh, pure, and that can obviously add the friction and so I come into conflict with a lot of things in the show. So you've done so many shows. I mean, you, 9 to 5, uh, The Wedding Singer, uh, what are Legally Blonde, Legally Blonde. Like stuff like that. So when you get asked to do this, I assume, that someone comes to you, that, like, what are you thinking? Because this is not a well-known, it's more of a cult classic underground, but it's so different than what you've done before. It's, which is the exciting thing. Mm -hmm. I was so excited. As soon as I, I heard they would like you to do it, I was like, yes, okay. I'll do <laughs> that one. I was, I was really looking forward. There's a very unique way that uh, this pastor dies that uh, involves, you know, the teeth and everything. So, uh, <laughs> oh, as awesome. a matter of fact, the, the first uh, first row of the theater is the splash zone in the audience, so don't wear white. That's all I'm saying. Don't wear white. I'm intrigued. How much are the tickets, by the way? Uh, I don't know the ticket prices. Okay. I'm just new to this show, right. but uh, I'll be sure to just look at it at New World Stages or uh, teeth.com. So you you start rehearsals today? Yeah. Do you know your lines and everything? I know, I know nothing. Uh, no, I, I, <laughs> I've read through the script and, and uh, looking at a lot of the stuff, uh, that's, what, that's what got me so intrigued. Uh, and the songs are amazing. Uh, uh, Michael R. Jackson, as, as you said, is a book writer, but also part of the lyrics, and Anna K. Jacobs, who writes the music for this and the lyrics, these are all, the kids say, bangers, this okay. show, so it's, it's really good. But don't bring the kids to this show, though. I mean, you know, I would say uh, 
Puberty and up? Puberty and up, yeah. And up. yeah why not? PG-13 or PG something. PG-13, right? yeah, yeah, why not? Uh, it's it's the, like the cult classic. It's yeah. uh, not jump out of your seat scary, but it does make you think, and, and there are some great things that the horror uh, fans are really going to like. This is going to be good, Andy yeah. Carl. Congratulations. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. I'm so excited. Congratulations. Sounds fun. Thank you. Break yeah. the tooth. Come see. <laughs> <laughs>